Good evening, everyone. Fellow Singaporean, are you all on fire right now? Thank you. I can hear you. Very good. Let's keep up the spirit for tonight. Indeed, I like your fire. A fire of love and a restoration for a better tomorrow. Tonight, we are indeed at a crossroad to a new and better tomorrow for all Singaporeans, you and me. Right after the nomination process on nomination day, our island was plastered all over the island with PM's Lee photo, which says, with you, for you, and for Singapore. For, our, for a while, I was astonished. I was baffled. I was wondering, since when was PM Lee with us? <laughs> Amazing, right? One good case for us to remember was the 6.9 million white paper. If he was with us, why ram that through us? And if it's for us, why push it through the paper on us? It doesn't make sense, right? Thank you. In a recent NUSS political dialogue that was held recently in August, where each political party sent a representative, in that session, Madam Sim An, a Minister of State for National Development, boldly declared that Singaporean has consented to the population white paper, which drew much laughter and giggles from the audience and also some from the members of the representative. I hope some of you might have viewed that, but when I viewed that, I was laughing, but she thought it wasn't funny. So when did Singaporean actually consented to that population white paper? Did you all consent to that? Did you all consent to that? Of course not. I myself did not consent to that. If we have consented to that, why was there a mass protest in Hong Lim Park subsequently after the passing of that paper? Or was it only 77 PAP members that actually consented? So can that be a consensus from all the citizens in Singapore? Is that right? Mind you, that population white paper was not only poorly written and flaws was also discovered. And the most glaring one was how it belittled the nursing profession. I hope you remember that incident which caused a ruckus in the whole nursing industry. You know what? Surprisingly, no one committed harikiri. Don't you find that funny? This white paper saga has certainly reflected badly on the quality of our civil service and the ministry that was running it. Another hilarious and recent example is our S50 currency note, where our late president, Inchek Yusof Ishak, was wrongly spelled F Yusok. Don't you find that funny? And it was not the first time that mistake was made. Our first president was called Yusok. What an embarrassment and insult. Mind you, that was, mistake was not only the first time. The service quality by this government given us the impression that they are on autopilot mode. For the past many years, and what happened? It seems like nobody cares. And look at us now, especially that lady was saying, she has lost a job. Isn't that scary? 
As Mr. Yam Tong Ta once said, our civil servant must be more hands-on people. That is, they have to go down to the ground to see, to feel, to listen to the citizen pulses. Otherwise, how can you come up with good policy? Is that right? But sadly, what happened is that our minister and top civil servants are too high up in their ivory tower and not in touch with the citizen. Let me cite a recent example. Recently, I was walking on the ground in Bukit Pato East. I met a few residents complaining about the building of a multi-story car park on the open space beside Block 240, Bukit Pato East Avenue 2. It was a kind of an upgrading program. These residents could not understand why the need for this multi-story car park when there are already many car parks around the surrounding areas. They felt that the neighborhood lacked an amenity center and taxpayer money could have been well spent if a multi-story purpose car park like the one beside the Commonwealth MRT station was built. Again, what does this tell us? Sumatido! They are all sleeping! Sui Jiao Liao! Yes, yesterday I even discovered something more scarier. Kambat ah, ngo hai puke pato tong ah, kinto ya yong ya, ho tak yen keng ah. Ngo yi wai ngo fan zo hai siu yan to ah. To teng ke puke pato tong ah. After returning home, I decided to search the HDB website, looking under the ethnic integration policy, or in short, it's called EIP. I have decided to take a screenshot of the page before HDB decides to amend it, just in case. There is indeed a quota system under this EIP system, which is applicable only to non-Malaysian SPR, which stands for Singapore Permanent Resident. This quota system is only applicable to the resale market, and this quota is broken up into two parts, one for the neighborhood, while the other based on the block. Now, the percentage ratio is based on 5 and 8% respectively. I was walking around the blocks in, in that cluster from block 231 to 240. So in total, there are roughly about 1,000 households. If we take based on household and based on this EIP, it's roughly about 50 slightly or more household of this non-Malaysian SPR. Now, if we look on a per block basis, per block is about 8%. And let's say a, an average of 120 households in one block, we are looking at about nine families of non-Malaysian SPR. But you guess what I found? Nearly more than 50% are from India. I was so shocked, that's why I say I was back in, in Little India. Because for the last 50 years since HDB was formed, the purpose was to avoid enclave. And what I'm afraid of is an enclave. So I urge Mr. Ko Bun Wan and his entourage of top silver servant to go and have a look before an enclave really becomes one. Thank you.
Now, the question is, is there a breach or an oversight? But that concern should not be us, but rather the government. My, my final parting shot for the PAP is how on earth can a monthly household income of $1,000 buy a HDB flat? I think you, everyone must have heard of this before. ตามมันกล้องกวยจิเกเกเทงาอุจิเชงคอท่านจิเชงคอเอไซบุยจิเอชดีบีเอปังอ่ะเลยซองซินโบเลยกล้องขี้เซียวโบตันซื่อจริง